Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Praise God. I love this. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today my daily bread, and I receive it from heaven. It is coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Now, we've been looking at what, what the Lord has put in my heart concerning this month of September. But before we go into the study, let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to bring forth your truth. Holy Spirit, Jesus said you will guide us into all truth. And we believe him. Therefore, Lord, we yield our minds and our hearts to you completely. Guide us into the truth that God has ordained for today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare right now every burden is lifted and yokes destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see the neck pain. Someone having neck pain. You know, pain around your shoulder here. It's gone from you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can, you can go ahead and begin to turn your neck and check. The pain is gone. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That yoke has been destroyed over your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now we are looking at what, what the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you. And, and we, we're taking a uh, text from the book of Jude and verse 3. He says, I'll read it again. We started yesterday looking at it. He says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that you should earnestly, not casually, not casually, not, well, if that's how it is, then we should know. He says, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Things have changed today. That's why he's telling us this. Sometimes you even want to look for the truth in the gospel and, and you hardly find it. Why? Because like I was explaining to you yesterday, there are some people who think they are wise and they've come in to the gospel. See, I remember many years ago, I, I, I was listening to um, uh, the, the, the late Archbishop Benson Idauza, and he was sharing, oh no, 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 not, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was sharing how, you know, many years ago, some preachers were trained, you know, on how to, when, when, when the church began to go on TV. So he explained how some preachers began to we're, we're trained, they got some professionals to come train them how to ask for money on TV. And, and these professionals will come and tell them, look, when you get to this point of your message, and then you shoot. So it, it now became like, oh, this is the thing. This is why we go on TV, like to, to, to beg for money, to solicit for money. See, And, and, and he, he was sharing how that was so uncomfortable with him. But you see, what he said was this, looking down, he, he looked at those ministers and almost all of them had shipwreck in their lives. Why? Because they accepted the wisdom of this world and not the faith that was delivered to the saints. And many people are in that boat today. Professionals are coming into the church to teach the church how to do ministry. 
to teach the church how to preach the gospel, brothers and sisters. When G now, now of course we love things being done, being done excellently well. But you see, our excellence, I, I want you to listen to me carefully. Jesus in himself, when he was choosing his disciples, he mostly chose unlearned men. That was his choice. In fact, the Bible said one time they looked at the disciples and they said, how come these men know this much? Meaning that they are unlearned men. And then they recognized them. They said, it's Jesus that they were for. Oh, see, see, because they, 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 they came to that conclusion that Jesus was the wisest man. That Because they tried to. I mean, think about it. They tried to catch him with words or anything. Jesus outsmarted all of them. Yet he didn't go to their schools. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Praise God. So they looked at these disciples. and Now they already had this thing about Jesus. That Forget that Jesus. The guy is too smart for us. So the disciples of Jesus now came on the scene. Walking by the same spirit that Jesus was walking by. And... And, and they looked at them and said, come, these guys are learned men. What's going on here? He said, no, they were with Jesus. Said, oh, they were. Oh, now we see. Now we see. That, that man must have taught them some wisdom. Yeah. Where is your wisdom from? The wisdom that you are yielding to, where is it from? Listen to me. If you think you are wise in this world and your wisdom is putting the faith of the gospel aside, then you will get to that point where the Lord will leave you alone. Because the Bible says he, 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 will, he will take the, crafty, the wise in his craftiness. So you be careful what you call wise where the gospel is concerned. Because many lives have been destroyed in this thing of let us be wise. There is the wisdom that is of this world. But there is the wisdom that is of God. And the wisdom that is of God is the wisdom that he teaches you. Christ has been made unto us wisdom. What do you understand from that? It means when we follow the thoughts of Christ... Christ has been made to us wisdom. Doesn't mean we just sit down like, mm, now I'm wise. No, sir. When we follow the thoughts of Christ, how do we follow the thoughts of Christ? Okay, I want to do this. And, but, but I am concerned. What, what does Jesus think about this? What does the gospel message say concerning this? And when I'm in the gospel, I'm talking about the gospel that Jesus preached. What does he say about this? And, and you, you look at it and you said, okay, I would rather go with Jesus than go with the world. Many times we find ourselves in situations where we have to take such decisions. And then we have to decide which way to go. Do you want to go with God or do you want to go with the world? Now, listen. If you go with God... Then you are putting God in a situation where he will have to prove that his word is true. If you go with the world, then you will have to accept everything the world gives. And brothers and sisters, most times, almost everything the world will give to you is death. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end of that way are the ways of death. I love to explain this that way. It's like you're moving on the road and that road seems right to you. But then he's telling you that when you get to the end of that road, you'll meet a junction. And when you get to that junction, every way that junction leads, every way, because it's a junction now, whether it's a T-junction or it's a multiple road junction, you see that junction? Every way you take from there will lead to death. Why? Because it wasn't God's leading that took you there. And many people's lives have been led to death. God was right when he said, I want you to listen. 
when he said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Meaning, the day you stop receiving words from the mouth of God, death have set in your life. God spoke to Adam and Eve. And they were supposed to live by every word that proceeded from God's mouth. But guess what? When they disobeyed God, they were cut off from that fellowship with God. That was the day they died. Now, they were still living physically and for many years. But guess what? They died you see, how did they die? The day they stopped hearing from God. And death came in. And you see, Jesus knowing this. Oh, I pray we understand this. I pray you understand this. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Chapter 2 rather. And verse 6. Watch this now. He said, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. As you have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Now, nobody gave Christ to you. You were baptized into Christ by Christ himself. Nobody can baptize you into Christ. The baptism of Christ is not something we do by ourselves. It is Christ himself that baptizes you because he is the baptizer. And listen. You receive Christ by faith. Otherwise, you didn't receive him. Oh, not everybody that went for the altar call received Christ. No, not everybody. Say, yeah, but, but I said the prayer. It, the saying of the prayer doesn't mean you... <laughs> let me put it this way. The, the speaking or the repeating with the pastor doesn't mean you said it. Putting your hand on your chest doesn't mean you said it. The Bible says, if you shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, what does it mean if you confess the Lordship of Jesus? He's not saying if you stand before the preacher and speak. Confession is a very big and deep word. Confession means I have come to realize. Now, you see that coming to realize, it's a conviction only the Holy Spirit can give a man. There is no convincing a man can do that will make you um, convinced that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Only the Holy Spirit has the power to bring that conviction in a man. Now, what is that conviction? That conviction is, is a push to realize the lordship of Jesus. That's what the Bible tells us, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Notice, it said no man can say. It didn't say no man can speak. Anybody can open their mouth to speak Jesus is Lord, but it's different from saying. To say, it means you have come to that place of realization that you know that Jesus is Lord. You see it. You see it. Not anybody threatening you. If you don't give your heart to Christ now, come out. Because when you leave this service, you don't know if you're going to die. If you die the next minute, those are threats. Even though the substance of the threat may be real. But those are still threats. But when we preach the love of God, when we preach Jesus Christ, you see, the Spirit of God walking in the hearts of men is convincing them and is convicting their heart, making them to realize that, whoa, Jesus is actually Lord. Now, you see, from that day, that person, his mentality changes because he has begun to see the real angle of life. See, when he recognizes the lordship of Jesus, it's not just a one-time thing. A confession means this is my truth. 
Jesus is Lord is my truth. And it begins to influence everything that you do. Hear me? He says here now, the same way that happens to you, that is exactly how you should walk in him. Praise God. My time is up right now. Praise God. Listen, we are going to continue tomorrow. I pray you follow me. Listen, like or subscribe to our YouTube channel and put on the notification button. So when the message is posted, you will get it right. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.